Welcome back. In this random bits, we're going to make this ball bounce around the screen in Pico 8. All right, so we're going to launch Pico 8. And the uh, first thing we want to do is um, press the escape key so that we are in the program editor and we're going to create a function called underscore draw. And what Pico 8 will do is um, 30 frames a second or whenever it needs to update the screen, at least 30 frames a second, it will call this function. And in here, you wanna put everything uh, that you want to do. So for our game, the first thing we want to do is uh, draw our border around the screen. Um, so what we're gonna do inside our draw method is every time we're gonna draw, we're gonna use the CLS command and this will clear the screen. And then the next thing we need to do is draw our border. And for that, we're going to use the rect command. And now we have to tell it where to draw the rectangle. So in Pico 8, the screen size is um, 128 pixels by 128 pixels. And this location here is zero on the x-axis and this last pixel is 127 and it's zero on the y-axis and 127 which makes this point here 127 by 127 so 127 x and 127 y and over here this is point zero on the x and point zero on the y so what we want to do is draw a rectangle from this point basically covering the whole area and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to draw point from point zero zero to 127 127 and in pico 8 you've got a number of colors and what we're going to do is we're going to use this darker gray here which is color number five to do that so back in pico 8 we're going to draw from uh, point zero comma zero to point 127 comma 127 and we're going to draw with color number five all right so if i press the escape key to exit the code editor i can now run our program and we see our program's running and we've got the gray border around the screen all right we can press escape to exit the program and escape to go back to the code editor so next up, we want to draw the ball on the screen. So the first thing we need to do is actually create the um, sprite for the ball, the little picture of the ball that we're gonna uh, draw on the screen. And we can do that by clicking on this icon here and switching to the sprite editor. And with this first slot selected, which is slot number one, we're gonna draw our sprite. And if we look carefully, our sprites are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by eight pixels big. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, create a ball shape there. So let's create this yellowish color and we're gonna draw a ball in here. Something like that. And maybe give it a little bit of a highlight. Whoops, not quite there, maybe there just to give it a little shadow. And so this is what our little ball will look like. So if we jump back to the code editor, inside our draw function, we need to uh, be able to draw our sprite. And there's a function in Pico 8 called SPR for sprite. And the first thing you give it is the sprite number to draw. So in our case, it's gonna be sprite number one, which if we look back here, this is sprite number one, this is sprite number two, number three, number four, number five. Etc. So we want to draw sprite number one. And then we have to tell it where to draw. So we know that our screen is 127 pixels big. So if we said something like 60 comma 60 and pressed escape and then ran this, we'll get the ball in the middle of the screen. Um, but now we actually want to be able to control where the ball moves. So Getting back in the code editor, we can't just have it as 60-60 because the ball will never move. So what we really need to do is be able to position this ball. So what we're gonna do at the top here, we're gonna declare a variable 
which is like a, a named thing that you can store information in. And we're going to create one variable called x, and we're going to say it is equal to, say, 40. And we're going to create y equal to, say, 50. And then inside here, we're going to say, uh, draw the sprite at x and y. So if we escape back out of that and then type run, you see the ball is now drawn at that location. And if we go back and say change that location to 100 and maybe 75, if we run that now, the ball's drawn over there. So you can see by changing the x and the y variables, we can then control where the ball is drawn on the screen. So now we want to actually draw the ball or move it around. And in Pico 8, there's another function that gets called every 30 times a second, and that is called update. And inside the update function, we can now put our information about moving the ball around. So what we want to do in here is move the ball by changing the x and the y values. And what we need to know is uh, how much or how to change that x and y value. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two new variables, one called dx for delta x, and another one called dy for delta y. And this is the amount that we want to change uh, the ball's x location and the y location every time we call update. Um, and so what we can do is we can set these to any positive or negative values to control whether the ball goes left or right or up or down. So for instance, if I make this equal to minus one and this one equal to one, then what we can do is in the update function, we can say that x is equal to x plus dx. And we can say that y is equal to y plus dy. So that means every time we call the update function, we're going to take the current value of x and we're going to add dx to it. And we're going to set that as the value of x. We're going to take the current value of y, add dy to that, and make it equal to y again. So if we look at this code over here, the first time we run, our x is going to be 100. And we're going to say 100 plus minus 1 which is going to equal to 99. And then we're going to set the x value to 99. And for the y value, we're going to go y is equal to, which is 75, is equal to, um, or we're going to add dy to it. So y is equal to 75 plus 1. So that'll become 76. And then the draw function will draw, and it's going to draw our sprite at x and y. And then the update function will fire, and it will change our x and y values. Um, and so if we run this now, we'll see that the ball moves that way. Um, and it goes off the screen because we haven't got anything to tell it to stop it going from the screen. But before we do that, we can have a look at what happens, for instance, if we change this to positive y, I mean positive x, a positive number for dx. Then we run, if we run that, the ball will move to the right. And if we equal negative, it'll move left. In the same way, if we make y equal to negative 1, it'll go up the screen. And if we make it to equal to positive 1 or equal to 1, we can go down the screen. Uh, we can also make these numbers smaller or bigger. So if I go 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, then the ball will move a lot slower. Or we can make it say equal to two and two, and the ball will move a lot faster. All right, so let's just set those back to one and one. I might make this minus one and minus one. Let's have a look. So it's gonna go up that way first. All right, so now we need to get it to bounce off the edges. And what we need to do is that after we set our X and Y values, what we wanna do is check if those X and Y values are off the screen. So the first thing to do is to look if our x value is uh, off the edge of the screen. And if you remember from this diagram, off the screen for x here is uh, position 0. So what we want to do is we want to uh, make sure that x doesn't get smaller than 0 
or y doesn't get more smaller than zero because then we're off the screen. So what we can do back over here, we can say if x is less than zero, then we want to say that x or rather dx delta x is equal to minus delta x. Um, so this looks a little weird. Let me explain what's going on here. So what we're going to say is we're going to keep at, um, at the start, x is going to be 100. Every time we loop through, we add in minus 1. So it's going to go 99, 98, 97, 96, all the way down. At any point in time, if x is less than 0, then we want to set dx equal to minus dx, which is basically the same as multiplying it by minus 1. And so if dx is equal to minus 1, when we make it um, multiply by minus 1, that will make it positive 1. And if it was 1 and we made it negative dx, then that would turn it into negative 1. So effectively, this here just changes the direction that the ball is moving in the x direction. And we can do the same thing for the y. So if y is less than 0, then we want dy equal to minus dy. If we run that now, we should see that the ball bounces off that edge. But when we get to the other side, it disappears off the edge. And that's because we're not checking whether it has gone off the edge or not. So what we can do is we can then include in this check, we can say if x is less than 0 or x is greater than 128 which or 127 which is the edge of our screen then we will change that and we can do the same over here or y is greater than 127 all right if we run that we should bounce off the edge and on this side we should bounce as well now, if you look carefully, there's a couple of things going on here. Firstly, you can see we're crossing the line and actually on the right hand side and the bottom side, we're doing more than crossing the line. The ball completely disappears right off the edge of the screen before coming back. Whereas at the top, you can see it bounces off the edge of the screen, but over the line. And uh, that is due to a couple of things. So firstly, when we draw in a sprite at the x and y location, what we're drawing is from this point at that x and y location, not the middle of the sprite, but this corner over there. So when we check in in our code, if y or x is greater than 127, what we're really doing is ch checking if this point is greater than 127, which means it goes, uh, when we when we hit that, we're actually drawing the whole thing off the screen. Really, we want to check that this point is not off the screen to make it bounce, or this point, depending on the direction it's going, this side or this side, actually, is not. So because this thing is eight pixels wide, what we really want to do is over here, say 119, because it's 127 minus eight. 119. All right, now if we run that, we can see that we're bouncing off that side and we're bouncing off this side. And if you look closely, you'll see that we're not crossing the line on the bottom on the right, but we are on the top slightly. In fact, are we crossing the line? We are crossing the line on the bottom of the right. And that's because the line is one pixel wide. So what we need to do, if we want to bounce off the line itself and not edge of the, off the edge of the screen, we want to change this value here to 2, to 2, and 118, and 118. Oops, and we need to run that. And now you'll see that we actually bouncing off the line instead. Awesome. Then the last thing we want to do is uh, make a noise when it bounces off an edge. 
so what we need to do is press escape, press escape to get into the editor and this time go to the sound effect editor. And we're going to choose one of these sound effect waveforms. I think we'll go with, try this one and we'll draw a shape. And then we can press the space bar to hear what it sounds like. And we can draw different shapes here to get different types of sounds. That sounds interesting. Let's do more like this. Yeah, that could be used as a bouncing noise. And we can see that this is sound number zero. So in our code now, what we're going to do is if we detect that we've hit an edge, either on the X or the Y, so in there, we're going to change the direction. And we're also going to play sound effects number zero. And the same on the side. And if we run that now, we should get a bouncy noise. All right. So um, that's how you make a ball bounce around the screen. Feel free to try different values here. Uh, try to play with these values, make it faster, make it slower, change the X and Y. Um, and of course, play with the sound effects and try um, different sound effects in the sound effect editor. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you liked it, give me a like and uh, remember to uh, subscribe so you can get a hold of my other videos. Cheers.